everyone for coming out to see this debate. It's a great event that UNT puts on every semester. I'm really proud of being a part of this institution. Thank you so much, Alice and Kate, for coming so far to debate us. Um, so I know that we might appear to be a little bit behind in this debate, and it's not just their accents. 300 years of living in a former empire that tells other countries what to do is simply an unfair advantage in this debate. <laughs> is bad, and we don't believe that the British debate team has really responded to this idea. There are health impacts, there is a statute of sovereignty in place, and it simply is not the way that you solve borders, or solve diseases from crossing borders. And they say that the World Health Organization is uniquely equipped to deal with this issue. However, um, even if they are correct, uh, the World Health Organization is the proper organization to deal with disease outbreak. Their plan is flawed. Simply closing down borders is not a solution to uh, solving the spread of disease. Let's for a minute consider the case of SARS. They keep bringing up SARS themselves. So in Toronto in 2003, over 10 years ago, uh, there was an outbreak of SARS and they quarantined over 3,000 people. Over the last 10 years, we've had time to look back and examine this case and study the effects of this quarantine policy. Um, the mandate was issued swiftly and strictly, and the National Institute of Health has used this to study um, how effective this has been. Unfortunately, overwhelming evidence has suggested that the mass quarantine, not only did it fail, but it did considerable harm. All right? um, Isolating infected people with non-infected people is how disease spreads. They entrapped all of these people into one area, and according to the National Institute of Health, they quarantined at least 25 times more people than was appropriate. Um, furthermore, the lack of knowledge about how the disease spread and just knowledge of the disease in general fueled public anxiety and sapped resources. Right? Where Toronto failed, Vietnam succeeded. The most successful stop of a SARS outbreak occurred in Vietnam, and their method did not include controlling or restricting movement. Instead, prevention tactics such as increased communication, research, mobilization of resources, and education halted the spread of SARS. Now, over 10 years later, we would hope that we've learned from their mistakes. Um, it seems irresponsible to grant any external organization the right to segregate entire populations of people when we know that this only increases their risk of being infected. Now, let's consider the sovereignty precedent. Uh, considering the fact that most of these diseases that they are saying would need to be quarantined, quarantined and maintained are in Africa, essentially what is happening is a subtle form of genocide. To tell a country that they are not capable of containing an outbreak undermines their credibility as a governing body. Without a safely functioning infrastructure, people lose access to clean uh, food, uh, clean drinking water, medical supplies, or medical attention. These things are absolutely necessary to maintain or improve public health. This leads to widespread anxiety and panic within the civilian population that empowers rebel organizations to take action against the government. This is exactly what we see happening in Liberia. And people are not freaking out because they know Ebola is in their country. They're freaking out because rebel organizations are telling them that Ebola is a scam that was introduced by the government in order to get kidneys. Right? Um, so. Political stability is the key to solving disease. 40% of the people who are infected with Ebola in the current outbreak are surviving. How? By having a healthy immune system that's capable of fighting off the disease. And how do we maintain a healthy immune system? By eating clean, healthy foods, getting plenty of sleep, and washing your hands. These are fairly simple steps to take from the perspective of living in the US where we have a, political, a stable political system Texas governor's race notwithstanding, <laughs> and access to clean water, soap, and medicine. Experts both in and out of the CDC say they know plenty about Ebola and how it spreads and what the danger to the general public is, and most of the outbreaks in Africa have been quickly contained. These uh, lovely British debaters keep saying that these countries are willing to close their borders on their own, but this is a dangerous precedent to give the World Health Organization the right to uh, 
undercut these countries' sovereignty. And it's not just because the World Health Organization is out to get people. That's not our argument. We're saying this changes the precedent and gives other international governmental organizations the right to then violate state sovereignty. Um, and that's time. to do something that only sets a bad precedent for future uh, international relations. 